So I have this particular graph loaded up here. I see all these different elements, again, which I can turn on and off just like before. And these are the default options. If you want to have a little bit more detail, you can enable things like the floor it or the on. Uh, for the most part, the default options work great and give you all the detail you should need. If you get really close to your grass and you want to see something more detailed, you can turn on the florets and, and other details. But for the most part, this works just fine. Um, notice that this says show grass cover. Um, so this just basically turns on and off the, the ability to see one or the entire spread of grass here. So notice that this grass is circular in form. There's a circular amount of grass. How do we change that? Well, over here on the right-hand side, you see an icon which on the left says grass cover parameters, defines the area populated with grass. This is a very cool feature here. If you click on this, you will see this icon here up at the top that says grass cover form. And this allows me to change the structure of the grass, how the grass is grown, or the area that the grass is featured. So if I change the view, let's look at this from a little more top view, I can see that I can change exactly how this grass appears. And all these parameters let me change the size and complexity of this of the shape. I can, ha I can use these default shapes, or I can use probably what's most beneficial is this uh, icon on the far right, which allows me to import a particular surface. So I want to do that right now. I want to import a particular surface that I create. I want to reset Max. I'm going into Max, and I want to reset this. And this is a new feature new to Grass 2.0. So if you don't have Grass 2.0, if you're using an older Grass modeler like Grass 1.0, you're not going to see this, this ability to import uh, models from a different software. As a demonstration, I want to create a plane that is 100 by 100. I don't have any units to find. It's just 100 by 100, which is fine for what I'm doing here. Let's change the color of this to something other than what it is now, something easier to see, a blue color. And let's make this 40 segments and 40, 40 length and width segments. And let's add the noise modifier to this because I want to get a little bit of distortion to this terrain. So this is a 100 by 100 plane. I want to have the Z displacement or strength be pushed up 10. And I have to change the scale down significantly to get it to show properly. Let's put it around 20. So here is my terrain. This is my terrain. It could be really any size. I've defined it as 100 by 100. But this is the terrain that I want to have grass growing on. And I can have any shape that I want. It just has to be a continuous closed shape. I, I shouldn't say uh, continuous and closed. It just needs to be one solid shape like this. It can't be two broken elements. I can't have this split into two. And, and I can't do a lot of the crazy things that, that that you might think. So it needs to be one basically solid uh, object like this. In order to have the Onyx Grass program receive it, I have to export it as a particular type of model. I have to specifically, I have to export this as a uh, object file. I have to save it as a OBJ file type. So I need to go to the select file to export, and I need to select the object exporter type. I want to save this right to my desktop, and I want to call this terrain. This is very important here. By default, this option for faces will not be set to triangles. It will be set to quads. It was set to triangles for me because that's what I last used. It will be set to quads by default. You cannot use quads in Onyx grass. It will it has to have triangles uh, to to populate the grass, to populate the terrain. So you have to make sure this is set to triangles. Also, this flip YZ axis option is enabled by default. It's not it wasn't enabled for me because I had disabled it in the last use. I have to I have to disable this here or inside the Onyx grass modeler, which you'll see in just a minute. By default, this is enabled here. If you, you could leave this enabled, but you have to uh, 
uh, when you go into the grass feature, disable that same feature inside grass. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but just for simplicity purposes, it's just a good idea to turn this off. This is simply because the XYZ axis in Onyx is not oriented the same way as it is in Max. In Max, the Z axis is pointed upwards. In Onyx, the Z axis is pointed towards the camera or towards you. So this flip YZ axis has to be disabled. I'm going to set the scale. I'm going to leave the scale set to 1. Everything else is fine. The only thing I have to make sure I do is turn this off and set this to triangles. I can click export. It tells me the number of triangles that get exported. Now I can actually bring this inside uh, Onyx Grass. I can go to, I'm inside Onyx Grass, but I'm also inside this Grass Cover form. So this is where I want to import that OBJ file, the OBJ surface. Remember, it has to be OBJ. So I click on Import. I go to the Train object, select Open. And this is very important that you set the units correctly because if you don't, the units that you specify in Max will not translate properly. So inside Max, I set it to 100 by 100. Let's set that to inches. And let's uh, here is that swap YZ option that I said you had to disable inside Max. If you didn't disable it in Max, then you would have have to disable it here. Regardless, just make sure that it, you understand that if you ever see your terrain that you import, turned 90 degrees, it's because you either have this switch enabled here or inside Max. So uh, just be aware of that. This is on by default. Okay. And I select import. There it is. There's my terrain. And I'm, I'm going to use the, sometimes it's hard to manipulate the, uh, the view of this, but I'm going to hold down control as I'm turning my cursor around. And as you see, what's going on right now is the, the train is being populated with this grass. Now this is going to be an enormous, enormous amount of polygons, enormous amount of grass. This is probably not the type of grass that I want to use for this. So let's try something else. Let's, let's stop this, which I could have done if I had hit this paintbrush icon down here instead of trying to just cancel it any other way. So I cancel this. Let's open up a different type of grass. And one of the really cool types of grass inside this feature is grass covered true. There's multiple different types of grass covered true. This is a higher resolution type of grass than what I'm going to load right now, which is simple grass. If I load simple grass, that's going to be a, a much lower resolution. And uh, for test purposes, that might be what you want to start with. But it's just a really nice looking grass that I can load, and if I manipulate my view, you can see I have by default a square. I can change that again by going to this icon down here, grass cover parameters, then going to form, specifying the object import type, and now, since I already imported that, that terrain, I now have my grass, my simple grass, populated onto the terrain object that you see here. I select OK. And now I can save this. I can save this grass as either a 3DS or an Onyx 3D. Now I want to save this as an Onyx 3D file, which is which leads me to the next discussion on Onyx to Max. This Onyx 3D file type here is only available when you have the Onyx to Max feature. The Onyx to Max feature is there solely for the purpose of allowing you to save and import Onyx 3DS files, or I should just say Onyx 3D files. The Onyx 3D file is uh, it, it's saved with the ONX file type, and which you'll see in just a minute. But before I see that, I have to actually uh, make sure I, I have to accept these settings here. Uh, one of the most important, which is this unit. So I have to make sure this is set to inches. And I can do a polygon count to see what the polygon count of this object is. It is 64,000 polygons. I could use some of the features in here to change the complexity of the different elements of the graph so that it's fewer polygons. I want to save it just as is. It asks me uh, or it tells me not to give away or sell this, this file that I'm creating. This is called Simple Grass Cover. I click Save. And there it appears on my desktop right there. 
So now I can import this graph that I created in the modeler program and use it to populate the, gra the, the train that I created inside Max. So if I go to import, Notice that one of the file types is Onyx 3D, Onyx 3D4, which is the ONX file type. So I can select this, this ONX file type, this graph that I had created, and it says, uh, do you want to convert units? Yes. So now I've just populated my train with this graph. And by the way, if you haven't started using Max 2012, you might want to get on that uh, bandwagon because I tell you, it has got some really cool display features. Uh, one of which is sh automatic shadows, ambient inclusion, and if you notice, you probably won't notice as much as me because, it, because of the speed at which you see your screen refresh, but you see shadows and ambient inclusion uh, changing and improving over time. So it's almost like, uh, it's almost like I-Ray or V-Ray RT. It's improving, it's improving over time. And I also have these really cool stylized uh, viewport um, things I can do, like for example, graphite. If I want to display this graph as graphite or something else, I know this is not normally part of the the uh, class, but I just thought it was worth demonstrating because it does have some really cool features in here. Anyway, so these are different options, viewport options, but I'm going to just leave it on realistic. So here is my graph that I can now render. Um, I don't have lighting and, and materials already set up, but I did create a, a quick setup for this. This is just an image that took me literally one minute to create. The materials are very simple. The lighting is very simple. I created this with V-Ray just to show you how simple this is and, and how little I did with this. Here is the file itself. And it has two materials, one on the ground object, which is nothing more than one solid color. And again, this is V-Ray. If you don't use V-Ray, that's fine. This is simply the, it's as simple as you can get. It's just a diffuse color. Uh, the grass itself is nothing more than a, a uh, map applied to the diffuse channel, specifically a gradient map with three colors. And when I render that, I get this right here. So pretty nice looking stuff. Uh, and this is this is with the more complex grass that I mentioned before. This is not the simple grass. This is the more complex grass. There's two types of grass that you would want to use, the kind of grass that you would find on a lawn. There is grass true, which has several different examples or styles. And then you have grass simple down here, which is just a more simplistic version where instead of having pointed grass, you have more rectangular grass that has fewer polygons. All the other grass types are more uh, specific types that wouldn't be necessarily on a lawn. They would be more for landscaping. So that is, uh, that is much, as much time as I can spend on the grass modeler. There's a lot of stuff to discuss here. I mean, you really have to get into it and play around with it to see everything that you can do. Again, don't forget those four images that display uh, short uh, display uh, uh, a reference of what all these different elements are. Um, but for the most part, the interface itself is the same as any of the other modelers. You still have all the same features, uh, just a few extras. Okay, so that is the grass feature.